the rest of the guys. Hope they'll join soon. In the meantime, let's let's get started. Um, so over the last few weeks, we've had um, presentations from uh, Chaobo FS and Longhorn. Um, uh, we've put information packs together based on the sort of questionnaire that 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 we uh, that we drafted for for reviewing these sort of projects. Um, and we have that and presentations, which which I think we are ready to um, submit to the TOC. I believe all the other questions and sort of queries have been answered at this point. So unless anybody has uh, any other queries or um, any other things they want to cover, um, we can we can uh, we can forward them to the talk and and they can be candidates for the for the uh, talk project presentation next week. Is everybody okay with that? Or does it, anybody have any strong opinions one way or the other? I'm, I'm fine. This is Luis. Oh, hi, Luis. Yeah. I'm fine with the two. I'll second or third it. Awesome. All right. So um, I'll put the pack together and and send that out to the to the talk. Um, Luis has done a brilliant job and helped coordinate um, the webinar, a CNCF webinar uh, opportunity that came up um, again next week on the twentieth of August, um, and we've uh, put together uh, a deck and. So that will be that will be going ahead. Um, I will send out um, an email to the Slack. To um, we have we have a Zoom registration um, that we need to market and get some people to attend the webinar now. Um, but we're going to be covering um, what the SIG is and some aspects of the white paper and how storage is. Um, consumed in, in Kubernetes um, and end off with um, some discussion around the survey to try and encourage a few more people to to fill to fill up the survey. Um, on the topic of the survey, um, we have relatively poor uptake on uh, responses. I think there's about 15 at this point. Um, this week, I put a message in um, in the Slacks, uh, in the CNCF general, and the and the storage um, SIG channels. Um, Saad, have you um, shared this with the Kubernetes SIG? Did you ask Saad to do it? Yeah, I think Saad had said he was going to do it, but. Um, yeah, that's the um, If somebody else wants to send it out, feel free. Uh, I just, uh, do you want me to send it out to like the SAT channel? That's right, I hate SAT channel. The <laughs> six star channel. Yeah, that would be perfectly fine. Yeah, I can do that. Cool. Thanks, Luis. No problem. Awesome. That would be great. Maybe we can get a few more um, responses there. Um, so, so one thing is, I. You know, it'd be great. I don't know that such a thing exists, but a user channel might be a, a, a more meaningful thing because I think we know what the storage people think already. Yeah, there's a Kubernetes users channel. I can put it there. Yeah, I don't know that there's, you know, there's the channel on Slack. I don't know yeah, if there's, there's a mailing yeah, list. Yeah, I'm part of it. Yeah, I, I, put, I can put it there. Okay, that sounds brilliant. Yeah, we, we've we've struggled um, engaging with the CNCF end user forum in the sense that we we got an invite to the um, to speak at one of their meetings, but sort of it was poorly attended, and we didn't really get a whole lot of feedback from that. So we're 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 just looking for a way forward. Um, if if we don't get responses, you know, it, we we probably need to. Um, uh, delay it and maybe launch it again at KubeCon or something like that. But um, there's only so much I think we can we can push it. If, if we're not getting feedback, we're not getting feedback. That's that. Um, 
we do have uh, we have had um, on the next point we, we we have had a bunch of discussion to look at um, a number of uh, different content opportunities that we wanted to work on. Um, uh, Jing was was um, going to put a, a little framework together for um, uh, a paper that compares things like raw block stores and ephemeral disks and local disks and disks from storage systems, etc. Just to um, just to clarify some of the um, options and terminology there. Um, and we had also discussed um, about uh, writing a database section for the white paper. Um, Suku, is this something you can help with? And may, perhaps are there other people that you may, um, or, or other people on the call, or other people that you can recommend that could help contribute to, the, to a database section of the white paper? Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, um, uh, I think uh, when you go into the functionality, uh, block storage and database are like, there's zero overlap in terms right. of what they each do, yeah. Um, so uh, is um, who's going to contribute the block storage part? Oh, so so the block storage part that the the, the block bit is um, and the ephemeral disk etc. That's that's something that that uh, Jing was going to be putting together. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, yeah. So so we need somebody for the for um, for the database because the original um, CNCF uh, landscape white paper, um, we kind of said, look, there are key value stores and object stores and databases, and we had. Um, sort of sufficient content and sufficient skills to to cover uh, object stores and um, and key value stores, but we kind of put databases as out of scope for the first iteration of the white paper. So what we're looking to do now is is um, so it's taking a step forward and actually alter maybe a database, either a database section or or a standalone database white paper. Um, so we'd we'd be looking for a bit of guidance there. Uh, sure. Can you uh, send me the links to uh, what is already there? I can take a look and then see. Uh, um, see Absolutely. How to... I will put this into the, um, I will put the link in the chat channel. Is this in the uh, um, Kubernetes.io? Uh, Domain or is that uh, is it a different one? No, it's it's so so there's there's a link to it and and there's a PDF version of it of the white paper in the um, in the store in the CNCF storage SIG in GitHub. Um, oh, got it. I've also okay. just put, posted a a link to it in the in the chat channel. Yeah, I think I've seen the document. Uh, I vaguely remember reading it. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so, so, so there is that, um, and then finally, there's there's a, there's a third paper that um, that we were that we wanted to work on, um, which is uh, a performance uh, a performance paper. So, one of the things we were talking about was there seems to be a recurring theme and a recurring set of questions around how do I um, how do I benchmark um, and how do I uh, um, run performance tests in, in cloud native storage systems. Um, and a good starting point would probably be to, to document um, some of the tools and some of the easiest usage patterns um, that are available. And I, you know, I'm, I'm putting my hand up and volunteering to, to help write that. I'm, I'm really interested to hear if there are any other, um, if there's anybody else uh, who might be uh, interested in, in, in working with on that paper with me I'm, I'm hopefully looking for you know maybe two or three people who can who can um uh take up different parts of the document if possible yeah alex i'm not necessarily signing up to do it myself but i'll look around vmware where i work and see if i can find somebody okay that would be brilliant um one interesting thing is, you know, there are a lot of these benchmarking tools, but um, 
I think to do this right, we should probably approach it where we get tools in the categories of, you know, intended for block, file, object, etc. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I was I was thinking that we there are um, there are certainly, you know, things like FIO that do, you know, just IOP type testing, but then there are also things like Sysbench and, and the variety of other things that do database test workloads and the, and, there are, and um, there's the YSCB, which would do key value workloads, for example. Um, but, I, but what I wanted to do was kind of capture, these are tools you can run, but also maybe these are some of the kind of gotchas that, that you should be um, aware of when comparing different systems. So for example, you know, things like um, the effects of caching and compression and replication and dedupe and variety of other things and how that affects the, the benchmark results so that people can kind of work towards a, an apples for apples kind of comparison. Yeah, the, the other thing that I think potentially should factor into somebody making decisions is even something to measure network bandwidth consumption because some solutions vary on their usage patterns of uh, the network. And if you're taking your storage net related networking and uh, sharing it with the same networking backing infrastructure that you use for your compute workloads, um, you can have surprises if you don't really understand what's going on. That, and that's a very good point as well. So yeah, so so what what sort of um, what sort of impact does the does the storage system have on the on the environment? And so yeah, measuring CPU, memory utilization, and network they're they're all important things to keep in mind too. Yep. So so basically that that's kind of the, the general scope of the paper. Um, and I, I'm I'm going to try and have a. Um, um, I'm going to try and break it up into the relevant parts and try and add a few paragraphs over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, but if if other people are are interested, we can we can maybe um, have another call and kind of break up the work. So I have. Uh, 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 so we have done uh, benchmarks uh, uh, for Vitesse, both using Sysbench and uh, TPCC. Right. But they are uh, they were. With test specific, so if you're, I don't know if that uh, that counts uh, or how that can be um, incorporated into a generic uh, one, especially that there are not that many database types uh, storage for Kubernetes yet. Yeah, maybe um, I misunderstood Alex, but I was thinking a good first step is more just to. Uh, outline the tools available to do the tests rather than summarizing test results, right? Because the yeah. test results are, th that's a huge undertaking, especially since everything you'd go test is probably versioned and people might question the results as they oh, age. Completely, completely. So, so, so yeah, just to be completely clear, this isn't about publishing test results this is about publishing a how-to guide so if you want to if you if you have two systems in your environment how do you compare them and, and what tools do you use to compare them and how do you measure things so so i think i think sugu if if you have um sort of a bunch of background on on sysbench for example i think there there would be a huge amount of value in describing how to use sysbench and some of the gotchas behind it and um you know how do you test big scenarios and small scenarios and that sort of thing. That, that's, that's the kind of thing we want to capture here. Sure, I will actually, um, I will uh, introduce you to, uh, there's two people who ran the test uh, at PlanetScale. So I'll introduce you to one of them. They can, uh, they can give you the details about how they did it. So, so that part I think would be relevant, right? That would be fantastic. That would be absolutely really useful. Any other takers? Okay, I think I think we can start with that. So, um, so one of the things uh, one of the things that uh, we were we were thinking is we're we're kind of falling behind on um, some of the deliverables that we want to 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 put forward. So you know things like the the papers that we have 
um, just discussed now. Um, and I was um, I was uh, hoping that uh, we could agree um, on setting up a bit of more of a uh, a useful agenda to move forward with some of these deliverables. Um, effectively, what I'm suggesting is that um, we have uh, more regular meetings, perhaps once a week, to kind of get a bit of a cadence of some of these deliverables. And we keep two two of the meetings to be the the you know the the general um, agenda and project um, presentation type meetings as we have today. But also add, you know, another two meetings, which can be more focused on, you know, discussing the papers or, or you know, actively working on um, the, the the papers or the deliverables that we want to, that we want to move forward. We found sort of a weekly cadence to be much better when we were trying to put the white paper together because it kind of kept the momentum going and made sure that everybody delivered something every week. Um, is it, are, are you guys up for this? Is this something we can we can look to do? Yeah, I think it's important not to get so far behind that we have this huge backlog as we've seen happen on the TOC. So we could get ahead of it. It always puts us in a better position. But do you mean long term? Always have a work a weekly meeting, or just now until we have that flush? Certainly, certainly for the next, I don't know, two or three months, so we can get some of these papers out of the way and have some good deliverables um, to to kind of uh, uh, publicize. Certainly before KubeCon, you know, we 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 our our mission is, you know, apart obviously from reviewing the projects and being um, sort of. Uh, an extension of, of some of the stuff that the TOC does is also to kind of educate and to help the, the cloud native um, adoption. So some of these some of these things are equally as important, and I think we've gotten you know quite quite a bit of um, quite a bit of publicity from things like the white paper. So trying to get some more of these documents out is kind of important in my books anyway. But um, you know, I can't frog march people into meetings, but we do, we do, we do need to kind of keep up some of the cadence. But we can play it by ear. So, um, if things are moving, uh, if things are moving fast on their own, then, um, then you know, we can we can slow down some of the meetings. That's okay too. Does anybody have any? Sort of like strong opinions one way or the other on this. No, I, I don't. I think if we can do what we need to do, so I'm fine with it. Cool. All right. Um, so in that in that case, what I'm going to do is I'll I'll send out um, additional I'll, I'll send out uh, additional meeting requests, um, and I'll. Try and put an agenda into each one so that you know um, people can be free to join if if they want to work on the specific papers that, that we're working on for those uh, for those meetings. Um, before we go into any other items, um, we do have this <laughs> this thing about the selection of a logo. So the the CNCF marketing team of thrown some sample logos together that like to put some branding um, on the uh, for six storage um, some of them are kind of a bit generic and some of them have container and some more storage specific um, items in there um, if we if if there are uh, I know I know Suku has has uh, given some feedback and, and Steve Give some feedback this morning now too. Um, if there's anybody who has um, uh, any sort of strong opinions as to whether to not do something or to do something, um, please shout. But otherwise, we're probably just going to pick one uh, over the next couple of days and sort of try and settle that. Um, we'll discuss. We I might just put it in the Slack channel for um, some quick agreement, but. 
would really help if other people had opinions. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in and say that I don't like the spinning disc logo because spinning discs are going to die soon. Yep. Um, maybe an animal like a magpie or a squirrel because they hoard things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I was actually just just thinking that it might be nicer to have um, to have something that wasn't sort of very enterprising or, or you know a, a, some abstract box. If it's an animal, it's got to be a kangaroo. <laughs> a kangaroo. It's the only one with a pouch. <laughs> well, squirrels have pouches in their mouths. That's where they hold all the nuts. <laughs> well, an elephant might be good just because it, they're purported to have long memories. But unfortunately, I guess Postgres already took it. Yeah. That's the hardest one with animals. There's so many different small companies out there and different projects that have got these animals already. You've got to find one that's not been new. Well, they make up a completely new animal, right? <laughs> Something from Harry Potter and the Fabulous Beasts. Yeah, like the Niffler from the Fantastic Beasts. Good idea. <laughs> the trouble is, those co kinds of companies tend to sue you for using their logo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I, I do like the idea of, of, of having some sort of animal. Maybe, maybe what I'll do is. I'll go back to Amy and see if she can um, see if she can get them to 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 pick up some sort of animal thing. I, I noticed the, um, the security sig have have picked a logo with some sort of raccoon or something like that on it. So there you go. That might be the yeah, answer. Definitely, the trend is to go with animals. Uh, I, I don't like any of these that have got containers on. It's just too obvious. Yeah, and. To be to be completely honest, I don't know that we want to sort of restrict this to yeah. specifically containers or or I don't know you know specifically storage because it's supposed to cover everything from databases and um, APIs and all sorts of other things too. So yeah. All right. So I'll I'll <laughs> I'll ask I'll ask them to do some other stuff. Um, Finally, then, is there is there any other um, uh, any other things that we want to cover or to discuss today? Any other um, maybe ideas for for uh, papers or or content that we want to do? Wow, people were definitely more vocal about the logos. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd like to uh, probably start doing a paper, but maybe after KubeCon, on uh, you know what type of applications should use what type of storage, you know things like that. Uh, maybe like uh, suggestions, you know something like if I want to use MySQL, these are the storage systems and why things like that. So. I, think I missed a few a few weeks of these meetings while I was on vacation. Uh, Luis, you I think you started or were planning to start such a document. Has, has yeah. anything made there yet? Yeah, exactly right. Um, I just feel that uh, a lot of you know I've talked to a few customers and you know they're not as knowledgeable about storage as we are, so they don't know where to go. They know that they need. Uh, MySQL, they know that they need some database or etcd or something say, what do I put behind? Do I use local disk? Do I use network storage? Uh, what do I do? Um, and uh, it, you know, just something very generic. But again, I, just, I think after KubeCon, because I'm very busy at the moment, but uh, something around those areas I'd like to start. I think that's an interesting idea, actually, a generic paper about pros and cons of the different types of storage yeah. for different applications. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That that sounds that sounds like um that sounds like a really good idea. I mean, uh, Simon, is that something you might want to start helping with now? 
And, and is anybody else interested in, 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 in working on something like that now? I'm happy to help contribute to that. Um, I'm absolutely swamped at the moment. Um, again, after KubeCon is probably going to be a better time for me. Yeah, same for me. We, we're talking about KubeCon in December here. Yeah. Yes. So I, I don't think we as a, uh, as a, as a working group, I don't think we can kind of defer until uh, five months time. We just, well, I think at least, so we have to find other people then. And I think we need to start kind of now. Well, I think we can at least, I need to wait at least past August and maybe mid September. So. No, I understand. Um, but, but we have quite a few people here. I think we should, we should get started on something earlier than that. Um, just because if we if we only essentially start a new year, um, you know that's a long way away. I can I can try and carve out some time um, to do some content review or content edition if if I can. I will try and do that. Yeah, and I guess conversely, if we don't feel like we have enough people who have enough time, uh, we should go and find some you know solicit help outside of this group. If 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 this group is too uh, busy with other things to actually produce white papers, then we need to find people who do have the time. You, you know, if we could start like on an outline, I think we could probably divvy some of this stuff up a better, you know, a little bit better. Like I would be, you know, willing to take some subsections of it. All right, let's uh, let's take this offline then. I can uh, work with Simon and Brad, and then we can probably divide the work and conquer. Okay. Yeah, for uh, databases, uh, we have uh, done a lot of uh, debating on this, and we have a few, what, few what we call as viable configurations. Um, but I, I have a feeling that will be more or less the same uh, for any type of storage, uh, mainly because it's uh, centered around durability. Um, so I don't know if separating out a uh, separate database section would be helpful here. Well, I, I think we're talking about two different things, right? So, so the database um, portion of the white paper that we want to write is about the different database types. No, not, uh, not whether uh, local or uh, mounted storage. No, no, it's, it's, it's to sort of compare the different types of um, different types of databases, kind of like what how we, you know, have a, a few pages to describe different types of key value stores, for example, or or different types of uh, object stores, for example. Um, oh, got it. Um, so, so you know, that can be a few pages to kind of say, look, you know, there are um, transactional databases and there are distributed databases and there are NoSQL databases. You know, I'm I'm just kind of rambling a little bit, but you know, to cover those 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 kind of options. Um, and, you know, perhaps talk a little bit about some of the complexities of sharding or whatever else. Um, but I think what Luis is, is talking about is, is more to kind of say, okay, given a particular application use case, whether it's, I don't know, a database or perhaps a message queue or, um, you know, something like Kafka or, or something like that, um, what type of storage, um, what type of storage uh, fits those type of application use cases, um, and that actually is is uh, is uh, uh, you know th that 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 I think is actually a really really good idea because it it sort of takes it takes the white paper a step forward. In the white paper, we kind of described the different attributes of a storage system, and now what we're saying is. Um, we, if, if we take these use cases or these specific applications, what type of attributes do they do they need? Um, and therefore that kind of helps you select which storage system to use. Yeah, exactly. And I, I feel that uh, maybe unlike the white paper that this will probably be a living document as we find more and more, uh, I don't think it'll have an end. We'll just have ends for uh, applications that will do one application and then we'll add more and more as we go because I feel that there's so many applications, right? So uh, storage is changing as well. So as, as storage changes and we get more features added through CSI or whatever, then that's going to open up different applications to different types of storage back end. So it is definitely a living document. Yeah. I wanted to clarify some terminology. So I've, I've personally always used the word application for, you know, things that end users use. 
Um, are, are we using the word here to really mean infrastructure, things like Kafka, etcd, whatever, uh, what I've always referred to as sort of infrastructure systems? That's a good point. I feel uh, I'm using the word applications as uh, the consumer of uh, block or file or object. Okay, so so I mean, without wanting to be too pedantic, I think we should we should use a different word than application for that because application traditionally means the actual the actual thing that that users use. Yeah, um, and they people will con will will that concept will be very obvious to them. So we need to make sure you you're right that we don't make them think down the wrong direction. Well, we call yeah. it that because to me, an application would be a database or something that does matter it, it'll, in some matter. Yeah, it all depends where you look, where you're coming from, um, but uh, but yeah, you're. I don't oh, know. You, can, you can start it with a definition of the words you're going to use. Yeah. Uh, we, we 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 can we can use something like use case rather than application because. Yeah. I'm fine with that. And yeah. is there something in the CNCF? their definition of things that we maybe should be using to tie it all together. So across SIGs, it's... That's not a bad idea. Uh, we, we can certainly... I, I'm not aware of there being such a thing, but but I don't think it's a bad idea for us to uh, elevate. So, so we, we've published this white paper and we've got a bunch of terminology definitions and things in there, some of which may not be uh, storage specific. Uh, in which case we might want to propose having a like CNCF terminology, you know, uh, w what would that be a glossary of terms or something um, where we can elevate some of these things to there so that we're using common terminology across all of the SIGs and across the CNCF. Yeah, and I just want to ask um, one logistical question. Um, the that we have a, a GitHub location and the documentation that we're writing is separate from the GitHub location. It's like in Google, um, and it's probably under somebody's, uh, someone's Google Drive. It, when we write the paper, do you mind if we write it as a markdown format in GitHub? That way, it's part of the repo and it stays in there. Or do we write it in Google Drive and we just point to it? I think I, I think we should write it in markdown. Yeah, I'm. I'm suggesting that. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a that's a fairly well used model. Um, one caveat is that often in the early stages of the document, where there's lots of comments and uh, revisions and edits and changes and things, um, people generally seem to think that Google Docs is better for that part of it. And then once it stabilizes and we say, okay, this is you know v1.0 or whatever, uh, then then we dump that in Markdown. We, that's fine. we change the, you know, at the header of the document, usually people say this document is closed for comments. You know, the final version is in XYZ location in GitHub. And then, you know, more minor edits from there can be PRs, et cetera. Yeah, that, that sounds fine. I just, um, that way the output goes in the, uh, in the GitHub. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Did we not do that with the white paper, Alex? I don't remember. I thought we did. Um, you know, I did convert it to Markdown and I think, there might even be a PR, and I never actually accepted the PR. I okay, can, yeah. I can push that through. We intended to do that, Luis. We just yes. didn't push the right buttons. It sounds like <laughs> it's all good. Excellent. I just this is great. I'm, we are on the same page, so it's great. One oh, other comment about. Right. This. Oh, sorry, carry on, Alex. Oh, I was just going to say, um, Pandoc for the win. It uh, it was the tool I ended up using to do the conversions. Oh, okay. Um, one, one other uh, thought around this. So, so uh, Luis, I think I understand your proposal, which is to take a bunch of what I'm going to call storage infrastructure uh, systems uh, like etcd or uh, MySQL or whatever it happens to be uh, and talk about good ways to put storage underneath them uh, and maybe bad ways. Um, we also had a conversation a while ago about a next step, which was to solicit from cloud native uh, users uh, how they are using storage uh, successfully and otherwise. And there was a questionnaire and all that stuff. And I apologize. I've, I've been out of the office for the best part of a month, so I might have missed some stuff. Um, 
a, a slightly different approach to what I think you're proposing is to essentially say these are so, some success and failure stories around cloud native storage and try and kind of structure it in such a way that people can kind of read it as a best and worst practices. I don't know if that's the same thing as what you're proposing or different or, or whether we need to choose one or the other or we can do both. I'm not sure. The, the, what you're proposing sounds to me more like a blog, which it will be a good story to read. Uh, well, but oh, to be clear, this is a, this is a fairly substantial uh, document that I would see as much more closer to our white paper in size and scope than, than a blog, blog someone would read, you know. <laughs> I mean, I would have thought that the results from that questionnaire, whatever it was, would actually really nicely feed into this document as a, these are what people are using and then we can add our comments as to what we think as the SIG, the best way to do stuff with these applications, whatever we're going to call them. Um, and then you can, we can see how that ties into the real world cases of people saying, well, actually, we tried it your way and it didn't work that way. So we need to, I mean, that could be actually really quite useful as, a, as, a, as an informational point to start this off, that, those results. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and I think that's with some degree of skepticism, people view some of these, uh, you know, white papery type things as being overly theoretical or else, you know, marketing blurb by, by vendors. Uh, and I think, I think people, the, the common theme I've heard from what people want is actual real world things that, that have been done and either succeeded or failed. Uh, people seem to like that. Hmm. That's a fair point. I mean, it, it can be, I say, use that information as, as a starting point, as mm -hmm. at least uh, these are the applications that people talk about, and we can use those as a starting point and work from there. Yes, yes. I, I was agreeing with you, just to be clear. I was not disagreeing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Alex, where did we land with the questionnaire, and have we got any further towards getting some useful uh, responses to that questionnaire? So, so I mentioned earlier, I, I, I shared um, the link to the questionnaire in the um, CNCF Slack, um, and um, and Sandra Luis, I can't remember now, is going to share it with the um, Kubernetes SIG and the user channel for Kubernetes. Um, but so far, we've only got about 15 responses, so it's probably not super useful. It's better than nothing, I guess, though. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, all right. Um, I guess at some point we have to give up and say that there's too much apathy to expect to get any input. <laughs> Pity. Uh, a lot of effort went into, into crafting that uh, questionnaire. If we could get some people to fill it in, I think it would be super valuable to everyone. Oh, well. I'll, I'll try and pull together a, a, a quick summary of... of mm. What, what the output of the questionnaire is. There might be some nuggets that allow us to focus on one or two, on one or two use cases. Yeah, I mean, 15 is better than zero. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a Smith. So, so this conversation was good, but I'm not sure where we landed. So if I'm reading this right, I think there were sort of two separate initiatives. One was identify some use cases and sort of go through some of the pros and cons about which storage systems to use for those use cases. And the second one, and that was, you know, what Luis and Simon were meant talking about. And then Quinton, you were talking about something more along the lines of um, give documents some, some real life success stories or, or, or indeed failures. Um, is that right? Did I, did I get that correct? It does. That's correct to me. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I think we were kind of, if I understood correctly, we were sort of considering combining the two in one document. If I'm not mistaken, that seemed somewhat sensible to me. But if if we don't want to, if we want to have two separate documents, I, I can understand that too. What if we don't? What if we um? What if we don't make this? 
you know, a big thing um, and try and break it up into smaller things. So if, if certainly I kind of like the idea that perhaps if we have a bunch of use cases, um, we could have a bit more of a community driven effort where um, people can give experiences, but also, you know, the pros and cons of different storage systems for each of those use cases. So in fact, rather than having one big document, we could have, um, we could have a directory of, you know, markdown files in, in, in GitHub, uh, one for each of the use cases, and different people or whatever could contribute to each of those. I think that sounds cases. perfect. Um, and we might, you know, we might be able to get the sort of a broader community um, raising PRs and contributing information that way. Yeah, yeah, makes sense to me. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think, Clinton? Uh, yes, yes, I agree. I think I think uh, breaking it up into smaller pieces like that is a good strategy for getting contributors. I still think we will need an overall kind of uh, driver person for this effort, who, for example, you know, decides what those areas are that we want to publish papers on. Uh, and then finds people to, you know, suitable experts to, to write the necessary stuff uh, and perhaps has, has an overarching, you know, cover document that says, you know, these are the areas that we're interested in. Here are the links to the specific, you know, application. Maybe it's what, whatever that word is we use. Here's, here's how we think Kafka works well. Here's how we think uh, etcd can be successfully deployed, etc. Yeah, maybe, maybe provide a few templates to... Um, which, which can be consistent against yeah, yeah, exactly. spaces and whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, if these meetings happen more often, then it'll be easier for us to propose like a, a use case, and then we can go ahead and uh, take care of those use cases. Mm -hmm. Luis, did you have a did you have a specific first target? Maybe maybe that's a good way to start. Is to yeah. pick one yeah. of these write that document, you know, figure out what the structure looks like, how long it is, etc. Yeah. And then say, here's a template for all the other ones. And these are the other, you know, six that we'd like to tackle next. Like, uh, let's just picking out of the air, like a Kafka one and, uh, yeah. and a Cassandra one, right? Yeah, yeah those, those sound like great candidates to me. Yeah. I think we can come up with a format, you know, trying to come up with the infrastructure for it, we can start creating these. You can even start with, you know, creating issues. I would like to get, you know, so we can, in the next meeting, I think I'll, uh, I'll start sending out emails, uh, but we can start coming up with a process for this so that everybody follows it. Why would we select, I mean, I know we're just picking those two out of the air, but should we define like characteristics of those pieces that would lump other Applications, and we want to call them applications. Other systems <laughs> or I'd rather, you know, I, I I know that we need to bind it off something, but I think we also need to like have a profile of what that system looks like, so that the use case makes sense for other applications outside of just these two out of thin air, because we're going to be asked that, I'm sure. Yeah, we just. I, that's a good point. I, I I'm trying to figure out how to answer it, but I think that. Uh, you know, I feel this. This is a a not a, a one stop thing. This is a continuation. We will continue to get use cases for for and we'll continue creating suggestions. So if I I'm trying to view this instead of bottom up from top down. If I am not a storage expert, what do I want to see? I would like to see a location where it gives me some kind of help for the application I'm looking for. And that's, so, that's right. okay. How about, how about we do this? Because I, I get that, that feedback that Aaron said, we, we should pick the use cases with a purpose, right? Um, and certainly it would be useful to start with something really simple, like, you know, a standalone MySQL or a standalone my Postgres. Um, and the focus on that can be around, um, you know, uh, how do we do performance and how do we do 
replication and how do we do you know various other things um, and that can be a nice simple use case but then each of the use cases we pick can actually um, explore one or more of the different attributes as we define them in the white paper. So for example, if we pick Kafka, that can be all about, um, you know, sequential uh, throughput and, and you know, maybe perhaps some of the distributed nature. If we pick a NoSQL database like Cassandra, it can be all about, you know, the data locality and, and having multiple copies of the data and um, eventual consistency questions and, and you know, those kind of, those, those kind of discussions. And, and we kind of use each of those use cases to highlight one or more of those of those attributes and kind of structure it that way because that kind of then allows them to pick the appropriate storage system to to to, to match um, what that use case requires. Does that make sense? I'm thinking we should also uh, we should look at uh, uh, using CNCF projects like Vitesse and Tai KV. Um, since and promote those right that that's another consideration I, yeah, yeah that's, not... a, that's, that's that's a good point even things like prometheus perhaps mm. it also makes the you know the experts more accessible we, we could go to those projects and we can say how do you guys recommend these things get deployed um easier than you know some some other project that may we may have less closer connection with yeah, I like that idea. And a good chance for us to collaborate. Because I think some of these projects crave also that interaction to to know how they should be maybe doing persistence properly. Yeah. Instead of just, yeah. we found this blog and that's how we set it up and maybe mm. it's totally wrong. Yeah, that sounds right. The other thing that crossed my mind, I thought I'd just mention is that many of these, uh, I'll call them storage systems, um, you know, depending on the actual application running on top of them, um, the deployment, uh, the best deployment differs substantially. So, so you know, etcd in Kubernetes is typically backed by, uh, you know, persistent, remote persistent disks, which have, you know, poor performance and various other characteristics. But for that specific use of etcd, it kind of makes some sense. One might argue not, but anyway, it is the way it is. Uh, whereas if you want a very high throughput one, uh, you would, you know, deploy the storage part of it as in a very different way. And the same applies, I'm sure, to Kafka and Cassandra and other other application or other storage systems that uh, there is no one good way to deploy a given storage system. It depends on the application that's running on top of the, of the storage system. Does that make sense? And, that, and that's a fair point. And, you know, that would be a caveat that has to be applied to any anything we would suggest. It is a suggestion, not a, a this is the only way to do it. Hmm. Uh, I, I I, make, so, sorry, Alex, just very briefly to finish. I just want to make sure we didn't ha end up with a, you know, this is the good way to deploy Kafka. This is the good way to deploy Cassandra, because I think there isn't such a thing. So, so that's, that's correct. So, so what I had in mind was if we, if we, um, I want to avoid trying to boil the ocean here, right? So I, I want to avoid having to discuss every single permutation and then taking six months to come up with every use case because that would be wrong too. Yeah, um, there, there is value in getting something out quickly here. Um, so it's, you know, it, it, again, just going back to a simple example, if we pick something like Postgres, for example, we, we, can, we can talk about a simple Postgres install mm -hmm. where um, a storage layer is doing some form of replication or, or high availability, but we can also, um, you know, the, the, the natural evolution would be that you'd say, okay, well, what if you have multiple slaves with Postgres and or what multiple masters or, you know, Postgres level replication and, and all of that sort of thing. But I'm kind of hoping that what we can encourage is if we, if we do a template with one of permutation of that use case, then um, hopefully the community can continue to feedback, oh, and by the way, if you want to use Postgres this way, this is another way of doing it. And we can kind of grow that. So, so I don't think we need to have every single permutation. We can say, if you use Cassandra this way, or if you use etcd this way, or Prometheus this way, then this is one way of doing it. Um, but if this kind of gets traction, then hopefully some of the people in those communities can also then help to contribute to this. 
I think a, a good way to start the document would be just to give a very high level description of the different design patterns you can have for storage and do the pros and cons of for those and then drill down into the applications or the more generic application type and how which design pattern would be a better fit for it. Simon, have you have you read the, the white paper that we already published? Uh, I skimmed it. I didn't I don't remember exactly what was in it. No, the, the only reason I ask is I think that that addresses or it's certainly intended to address the high level uh, overview that you mentioned. Okay, I'll go read it. Different different kinds of storage, the pros and cons of, you know, uh, local versus remote, distributed versus not, etc. Um, and then so what what I think we're contemplating now is the next step, which is how yes, does that apply to real Yeah, oh, I, I, my, I am remiss in not having read that white paper and seeing what's in it because it may just, just be an extension of that. But I think to Simon's point, like this white paper is very thorough and I think it gives people a good education on what exists, but it doesn't necessarily and I think you're right, Clinton. It's, it's the practical application of these options. What do those use cases look like from a pattern standpoint? Yeah, and I'm not saying that the white paper should only be about the patterns. You start it as the patterns, which references back to maybe the, the original white paper, but in a more succinct way. So it's not as long as that white paper. It's just covered in a couple of paragraphs or a page or two or something. And then you delve down into use cases yeah, that makes sense. Agreed. Yep. Okay. Just, um, just one, one last comment, if I may, on the uh, you know multiple options per storage system versus one. Um, I, I'm still a bit hesitant to to kind of do the the one option thing because people tend to fixate on that and think that that's you know the way we're saying that Cassandra should be deployed. I wonder if two isn't not much more work and at least breaks the sort of one barrier. Um, and what I'm thinking is that each of these papers, uh, let, let's take, you know, SED as an example, perhaps, is we start off by saying, you know, typically or often one either optimizes for throughput or durability, for example. Um, and and here's an example of a good throughput optimized deployment and here's why and here's a good uh, example of a durability optimized deployment and here's why um, hopefully that does I, I, I totally um, buy your argument Alex that we should not try and boil the ocean and I definitely don't want to make this too big um, but maybe two is like constrained enough uh, that that we can at least get the message across that there's more than one way of doing these things uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve yeah no that 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 sounds fine and 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 actually you know there's probably no harm in saying if there are maybe five or six things that we can think of that we actually just list them in the doc and kind of say these are um these are uh, other alternatives that um that that's uh, you know are coming next and, and just have yeah. them there as placeholders yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that sounds great. Cool. All right. Um, okay. So what I'll do is then, if everybody's is is up for this, um, I'm not going to put a, a meeting request in for next week because next week is kind of slightly nuts because we've got the um the webinar and the talk project presentation all on the in the same week so i'll try and schedule it for the week after but we i'll put in the agenda for the things we want to cover um uh and we can start we can start working on on some of these things um and as appropriate we can maybe break off into into a couple of other working groups or schedule some ad hoc other meetings too to make sure we, we, we start this off properly. Sounds great. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, unfortunately, it's time. Uh, was there anything else that we needed to cover before we, we, got, we close the call?
Thank you, Alex. And All right. Thank yes. Thanks for driving everything, Alex. You yes. Thank, you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day.